Why do we hate delegating tasks and jobs that mean so much to us to other people? Why can't we trust the right person to come in and do the job the way that you tell them to? Let's talk about that. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Neil Winterig with Matterhorn Business Development. And today I wanna to talk to you about delegation and give you a couple of quick tips on that in as short amount of time as possible as I can to tell you what is delegation, when should you start delegating things to other people and what's the most effective way to make it happen. So delegation is taking a job or a task and then picking somebody else to do that and giving that to them as their responsibility to take care of so that then you can focus on other things. Now, delegation could be one day or you're having one one big event and all of a sudden everybody it's like all hands on deck and you say okay you're running this and you're answering the phone and you're going to make sure that the bathroom has toilet paper whatever that could be delegation for one thing but let's look at it more from the viewpoint of I'm a busy person I have a lot on my plate and now I need to bring another person in and start delegating some of my jobs or duties or tasks to another person in that case what you have to do is you have to look at what jobs you're being most weighed down with and I kind of would look at it as like a sliding scale like what takes the most amount of my time and gives me the least amount of gain as far as my time management. So you're putting a lot of time into something, but at the end, it's really only doing one little thing for the business, but it takes up so much of your time. Those are the first types of things that you really do need to get rid of and clean your plate off of so that you can focus on other things. So what you have to do is you have to decide what are the things that I can't do anymore and I need to entrust to another person. What's eating up the most of my time that is taking away from my ability to accomplish our business's goals? whether it's administrative or sales, or maybe you don't want to be the one doing the main production or whatever it is that your business is. If you're laying bricks and now all of a sudden you're so busy that you're getting calls, you have jobs that need to be done. You have jobs that need to be sold and you're tired of being the bricklayer. Well, maybe now is the right time to delegate the bricklaying to somebody else or a piece of the bricklaying process that is eating up all of your time so that you can then go and do more sales calls to continue to grow the business. These are different ideas that you can look at. So find something and then give one piece of that to one individual. So you don't all of a sudden hire me and say, Neil, you're now going to make all of the cement and I'll be back in three hours because I have to go sell this other house that we're building and you make all the cement. And then you're going to show up and you'll be like, what, where's all the cement? I'm like, I don't even know how to make cement. You know, it's going to be completely destroyed at that point. You have to give me one task. You have to start with one job and say, you're going to take all the cement bags out of the van and you're going to line them up over here and we're going to start with 100 pounds. I want you to put 100 pounds of cement in the wheelbarrow, whatever it might be. Obviously, I'm not a bricklayer. And you're going to actually give me one task and you're going to let me do that one task repetitively over and over again, over and over again until you can drop me off at a job site, leave me there for an hour and come back and everything is the way that you want it. Then you start giving me other responsibilities and other duties. Okay, good. Now that we have all of the bags of cement laid out and we have 100 pounds in there, for every 100 pounds of cement, we're going to put in 12 gallons of water. And then you're going to start showing me this is what the cement is supposed to look like. This is what you're supposed to do. I want all the cement to look just like this. And if you don't know if it's right or wrong, and I'm in the middle of laying bricks, you come and grab me. Okay, no problem. You can teach somebody how to do that. And you start to slowly introduce them into it. You start to slowly introduce somebody into how to wear being the cement guy the guy in charge of all the cement. You don't just tell him that he's now in charge of the cement. You start teaching him step by step. And you might find that me, I'm not good at making the cement. I'm great at picking up all the bricks. I am great at getting the cement. I am good at pouring the cement in and I'm big and I'm strong. Obviously not really. And you're going to then tell me to do all of those functions. And then you go, you know what? I could take Neil and have him be the runner and the supply guy who gets all the bricks and gets all the cement and lays everything out. And then I can use Joe as being the cement mixing guy and eventually I'm going to turn Joe into the brick layer and now I don't have to lay bricks anymore. That is the idea of delegation and where people go wrong is that they throw too much too fast onto somebody and then get mad when they don't do it the way that you've been doing it for 25 years. That's why you hate delegating. That is why you don't trust other people doing your job is that previously you screwed up giving it to other people and therefore they screwed up and now you go, I don't trust employees. I don't trust people. I am the only person who can do this. That is where you went wrong.
And that is something that you have to get over if you're going to ever be able to delegate or get out of your business or hire new people. Because the one man show, getting the cement, mixing the cement, laying the bricks and selling other jobs to go, you know, bricks for is never going to grow beyond what one person can do. And maybe after 10 or 15 years, you've hit that wall, literally and figuratively in this example. And you've all of a sudden realized I can never grow my business. I can't retire all because I can't trust people. No, it's not that you can't trust people. You you have to trust your ability to tell people what to do. So when it comes to delegating, you have to decide what job or task you can easily transfer step by step and piece by piece to another individual until they can do it without you being there. But do not throw the whole thing on them at once. Do not get upset when after the first week, they still don't know how to mix the cement, okay? If they're doing everything else that you told them how to do, the easy stuff, if they're doing that good, let them keep doing that good until they say, hey, how do you mix that stuff? Once they've done that, you've actually done your job as far as delegation. That means you've actually turned a corner. Now, if you really don't have the right person that you can trust, then you have to go out and find the right person who can do it, okay? So don't be afraid of doing that. Don't be afraid of, you know, having to go through a couple of people. But if you learn how to delegate properly, you will find the right person and it will work out. It's just your previous times of not doing it correctly or throwing too much onto somebody at one time has left a bad taste in your mouth. And that's not their fault. It's actually your fault. And as soon as you realize that you'll be able to be okay with turning those functions back over to somebody else. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Give me your thoughts, give me your feedback. Tell me how stupid I am. It doesn't matter to me. I'll see you next time.